Hi and welcome to the video on applying algebra. By the end of this video I hope you're able to use algebra to solve some problems. So let's take a look at how we might do that. Algebra can solve, be used to solve problems where there are unknown variables, things that we don't know. It can be used to form a pattern or create a formula to help us with calculating. So let's take a look at an example. Aaron, Barry and Chris each have special deals for a local carnival. You'll notice that I highlighted the first letter of their, their names because we've got A, B and C. So it's general names. Now here are our special deals. Aaron can pay $50 to go on all the rides all day long. Barry can pay $20 to enter the carnival and then pay $2 per ride. And Chris can enter for free, but then has to pay $5 per ride. And the question becomes, who has the best deal? Who do you think has the best deal? The answer? It depends. It depends on how many rides they have. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this algebraically and we're going to write out some formulas or some patterns. Let's take a look at their costs. Let's take Aaron for example. Aaron can pay $50 and go on all the rides all day. This means that he will pay $50 and then that will be it. There will be no increase or decrease to his cost. Barry pays $20 to enter the carnival and then $2 per ride. So he will pay $20 to enter and then he'll pay $2 for every ride that he takes. Chris on the other hand pays no upfront, upfront fee but he'll pay $5 for every ride that he takes. These are some rules or some patterns that we've created. Now, who has the best deal? Well, let's take a look at what happens when they have one ride or a hundred rides. We'll look at this for Aaron, we'll look at it for Barry, and we'll look at it for Chris. Now, I've chosen one and one hundred because I want to have a look at what happens when they have only a small number of rides and what happens when they have a large number of rides. So let's take a look at Aaron. Aaron's cost will be $50 no matter how many rides he takes. So one ride will cost him $50, but 100 rides will also cost him $50. Barry's costs. Now, if Barry takes one ride, it will cost him $20 plus $2 for that ride. So it'll cost him $22. However, if he takes 100 rides, then Barry's cost is going to be $20 plus two lots of 100. That's $220. Finally, for Chris, if he just has one ride, it's only going to cost him $5 for the day. But... If he has 100 rides, it'll cost him $500 a day. So we have to look at what happens when they have a small number of rides, in which case Chris definitely has the best deal because it's only going to cost him $5. But if they have a lot of rides, then it starts to make sense to take Aaron's deal. So who has the best deal? Well, again, it depends on how many rides that they take. Now, they may not take 1 or 100. They may take 50 or 60 or 20. And we won't know who has the best deal. But if we look at the algebra or the pattern that we created, we can work out all those costs whenever we need to, depending on how many rides they have. All we need to do is work out these three, what we call formulas or patterns. But when we use algebra, instead of using the word ride, we would just replace that with a letter. In this case, it would be the letter R to stand for the number of rides. That's algebra. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at some situations where we need to change, use algebra to try and work out a pattern. Here are our examples. We have three of them. We're going to work out A, the total cost of K bottles if each bottle costs $4. B, the area of a rectangle if its breadth is 2 centimeters more than its length and its length is, eight, is X centimeters. And we're also going to work out the total cost of hiring a plumber for N hours if he charges $4 call-out fee and then $70 per hour. So let's start off with A, the total cost of K bottles if each bottle costs $4. Now, I don't know how many bottles I have, but I know that if I have one bottle, it'll cost me $4. If I have two bottles, it'll cost me $8. Three bottles will cost me 12 and 10 bottles, well, that'll cost me 40 And I realize that each time I'm working out how much the cost of the bottles will be, it's always going to be four times the number of bottles. Well, the question tells you that you have K bottles. So the cost of K bottles will be four lots of K. Or we might shorten it to 4K. This is what we talk about when we're applying algebra. I'd like you to pause the video and see what you might come up with with B. A hint might be to draw a rectangle and then see if you can't write down some variables for the length and the breadth. I hope you pause the video and try this yourself. What I did was I drew up a rectangle and it says that the breadth is 2 centimeters longer than its length 
and its length is x centimeters. So I'm going to put the length as x centimeters, which means that my breadth is going to be that much plus two more. So the length is going to be x plus two. Now I need to write something for the area, and the area of a rectangle is given by its length times its breadth. So because the length is x centimeters, the area will be x multiplied by its breadth, which is x plus 2. And in algebra, we write that without the multiplication symbol as just x outside of x plus 2. That is the area of a rectangle whose breadth is 2 centimeters more than its length. Now let's look at C. Again, I'd like you to pause the video now and see what you can come up with for an expression that will represent this situation. Okay, I hope you pause the video. Here it is. The total cost of hiring a plumber for n hours. So n can be any number if he charges $4 call out fee and then $70 per hour. Well, let's say he doesn't work at all. He just shows up to your house. He still gets that $40 call out fee. If the plumber works for an hour, he will get that $40 call out fee plus the work, the $70 for the one hour. So he gets $110. If he worked for two hours, he would get the call out fee, but he'd also work for two hours, so he gets two lots of 70. This would be $180. If he worked for three hours, he would get the call-out fee, and then he would get three lots of $70, which is $250. Finally, I'm gonna check four. What happens with four hours? What do you think? He'll get the call-out fee, and then he'll get four lots of $70, which is $320. So it looks like there's a bit of a pattern here. It looks like he's gonna get this $40 no matter what, plus he's gonna get however many hours he works, lots of $70. Two hours, two, three hours, three, four hours, four. So we want to work for n hours. So he's still going to get that $40 call-out fee, but then he's going to get the number of hours he works times $70. And to write that algebraically, that is without the time symbol, as a pattern, it would just be 40 plus 70n. And that is the expression that represents the situation. Here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to pause and summarize just the examples that we went through at the end. So I'd like you to write down the questions for A, B, and C, and then write down the answers and the solutions that we came up with. And that's it. You're going to get plenty of practice trying to use algebra to solve some problems and write out some generic patterns. As always, you can ask questions in class. Good luck.